Hey y'all, what y'all saying? So, this video is going to be blog talk. I think I'm going to rename it that instead of it being um, conversations with myself. I'll just leave that for like random topics that come to my head that has nothing to do with blog celebrity shit or anything like that. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's get started. Uh, okay, I know this story is old, but I wanted to talk about it, and um, I wanted to get some more info on it, and see if they were going to say anything on the show, but, um, I don't know if y'all heard about the letter with Chris Brown that he wrote, um, Carlin Harvey Levin, who's the owner of TMZ, he called him the devil, and saying that how he always talked about him, and he always, um, made him look bad in the media and stuff like that. Okay, so here's my opinion on that. Um, I've been watching TMZ since they started coming on TV in 2007, and they actually have been pretty funny to me. Um, I honestly do not think that TMZ makes Chris Brown look bad. They just report the shit that he does. And um, I get that he's trying to repair his image, but him saying that Harvey Levin, like, pretty much he's, is, he's making it seem like TMZ alone is making it, making him look bad. And I don't think that, to be honest, if he's going after TMZ, he needs to go after all the other blogs, site like Perez Hilton, who I cannot stand. I do not like that man. And um, he needs to go after Media Takeout. I'm sorry, Media Takeout talks about him horribly. Him and his girlfriend, Karuchi. Like, they talk about them horribly in, like, every story about them. I haven't... I've probably seen one or two positive stories about him. Like, when he did the... Um, I think it was some charity thing for some kids or something. Some shit like that. <laughs> I can't remember. That was a while ago. But they talk about Chris Brown horribly, and I don't think him going after TMZ... I don't, he wasn't right going after TMZ. He should have been going after Media Takeout. And how they talk about his girlfriend, too, saying how um, she have a boy shape, and she just... She's a... Anyway. I'm not going to repeat. Y'all can go on that site and see what the hell they say about her. Um, pretty much, he wrote that letter in response to them to... Uh, the video in the club when that gal tried to kiss him when he was trying to walk out and he pushed her away. In all honesty, anybody would do that. And I seen the episode with them talking about it and they didn't really make him look that bad, in my opinion. In all honesty, TMZ, I don't think anybody in TMZ likes it. The one who they don't like is Justin Bieber. I ain't no one like Justin Bieber, so... Fuck him. I can't stand him either. Um, back to Chris Brown. I think he needs to just chill. And just like, stay out of the limelight. Well, he can't really do that because he has an album to promote. But I mean, stay out of the limelight. Like, you don't have to be hitting up all these places where you know paparazzi's gonna be. And um, Raymond Simone made a great quote. Um, saying it's unnecessary to go to the most popular restaurants when you have a scandal on your head and then get mad at someone who is going to take a picture of you. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with that. Like, that's how a lot of these well-known celebrities, not the younger generation, um, like older, like Patti LaBelle and Whoopi Goldberg, um, Aretha, they don't really, you don't really see them in, uh, well, you see Aretha in the blogs now because of that awful David Letterman performance and with Sissy Houston. <laughs> anyway, child, that's a totally different thing. Um, that was hilarious, by the way. But like I was saying, you don't really see them in the weekly gossip blogs. What the In Touch Weekly and Star Magazine, or you don't see them on Media Takeout, TMZ. What that one is? Boss up. 
Um, who else is there? That Grape Juice, The Young, Black, and Fabulous, I think is one. The YBF. You don't really see them on that. So it's like they know how to handle paparazzi, and when they do go around them, they answer their question, and they keep it pushing. So they don't really have a problem with them. And even Whoopi Goldberg said the same thing on The View one day. Like, she just answered their question and keep it pushing. So she don't have a problem with them. And it's like the younger generation, like, who's all caught up in social media. It's like that's, they want to get mad when the paparazzi attacks them for not answering a simple question. But in their defense, some of the paparazzi's, I say paparazzi, paparazzi's are disrespectful. So... I can understand why, but a lot of them aren't like that. Once you be cool to them, they'll be cool to you. And half the time, there is their publicist who calling them, so you can't get mad. So just sit in the fucking corner. That's my opinion. Anyway, um, speaking of Raven Simone, did y'all see her interview with Oprah? <laughs> Anyway, basically the thing that stuck out to everybody was how she doesn't want to be labeled. Um, she doesn't want to be labeled as a gay woman. Or as a lesbian. I think that makes more sense or whatever. But we knew for like a couple of years that she was dating Asmarie from America's Nest Top Model. She, Asmarie's gorgeous by the way. She have a nice little buzz cut. She's very pretty. Um, so I'm out of that. She did good. And um, she also said she didn't want to be, she, do, she does not want to be labeled African American. Or she further goes into saying that she's all, she also doesn't want to be labeled African American. And here's my thing on that. Um, also, she released a statement actually uh, earlier tonight. I'm going to read that in a second. But um, I'm going to give you all my little story. Uh, after that whole little interview thing, I had a conversation with a few people, and one, it was about five of us, and one of them said that everyone in this room is African American, and I'm like, hold up, I'm not African American, and everybody turned and looked at me like, the fuck, are you serious, you ain't serious. And this, and then the dude was like, oh, use one of them new niggas, use one of them new blacks. And I'm like, what the fuck? Are you serious? I've seen that term, term on Tumblr, and I'm like, that's so stupid. Basically, they say the new black is um, black people who don't see color, or something like that. Something to that sort. And I'm like, that's not even what I mean. I mean... I don't know if I'm... Anyway, I mean that I was not... I'm not American. I'm... I was born and raised in the Bahamas. So, technically, obviously, I'm not African American. I mean, like, ah, And it's like, the one who's make The guy who's making the most noise and being so argumentative with me was like, I forget all the shit he said because at one point I stopped listening. I'm like, you know what, whatever. Because clearly you're not understanding my point. I was trying to get my point across and then he was trying to talk over me. And I'm like, you know what, I'll just sit back and chill because you looking for to get punched in your fucking throat. Because what I'm saying is I'm not American, therefore I cannot be African American. I don't, th I don't even think till this day he understood that. Like... I mean, I get that the only difference between us is a different boat stop from Africa, but I can't. I saw that somewhere. Like the only difference between um, the U.S., Bahamas, Jamaica, Cuba, and they named a couple other places. Were, was that it was a different uh, boat stop or something like that? And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. But I need people to understand that when someone says they're not African American, listen to their reasoning. Okay? So, um, anyway, like I said, because I don't want y'all flicking coming at me saying I was 
one, I don't identify as black. I didn't say I wasn't black. I said I'm not African American because I'm not American. Okay? Get it right. I am Bahamian. And I think they either consider us West Indian or Caribbean or... I think I've even seen Afro-Bahamian. I can't remember what exactly we're categorized as, like, but I do think it's Caribbean. But anyway, um, also what I noticed over here about within the same thing, over here in Miami, they have on applications African-American and then another box, they have black. So I'm like, oh, okay, they're distinguishing that everybody who's applying for this job is not one is not a certain thing like they had african-american they had latin they had latin american um then they had excuse me um they had black uh i think they had european asian and i forgot <laughs> But they're like distinguishing that like not everybody fits in the same three and white. And they're distinguishing that not everybody fits within the same two or three categories. African American, white, or well really two that they used to have. Or Latin. Three. Anyway, um yeah, that was my little story. So now let me read y'all her statement that she put out. And I'm like, okay, I, I could roll with that. Um, she said, this is Raven Simone now. She said, I never said I wasn't black. I want to make that very clear. I said I'm not African American. I never expected my personal beliefs and comments to spark such emotion in people. I think it's, it is only positive when we can openly discuss race and being labeled in America. Okay, go for you. I mean, you got to respect her opinion, whether you agree with it or not. And that's what a lot of people on the internet don't understand. Like, y'all don't know how to respect people's opinions. So y'all just want to pop off and... Anyway. That's being a... What, a Twitter? Not a Twitter bully. Uh... Twitter thug or internet thug, whatever they say. Like, you could say whatever you want, but the minute you see Raven Simone, you could be the biggest groupie. Not gonna lie, I have no love loss for her, for her statements and for her beliefs. Like, girl, go for you. That's you. Anyway, moving on. Um, so, celebrity divorces. That's what I have next on this paper. I don't know if y'all heard, but do y'all know the Neelys? They had a show on the Cooking Network. Not the Cooking Network, the Food Network. And, um, I think it was Down Home with the Neelys. And, to be honest, that show annoyed the hell out of me. They, no, not the show. They annoyed the hell out of me. Because they were always so lovey-dovey and, uh, they had so much PDA and they were like, Oh, daddy, and spanking each other on the ass. And I'm like, ew. Ain't nobody want to see that on TV. Like, y'all just cooked it. Like, show us how to cook the food, please. Ain't nobody want to see that, because that's kind of like... Ew. <laughs> I'm not a big PDA person. So... I mean, I'll fuck you to high heaven in private. And the public will know that we're together, but I don't really show affection like that in public. That's just me. But moving on, that's a totally different topic. <laughs> um... To me, they were like extra with everything that they did, what made me believe like something ain't right. Like something ain't right. And I, me and my parents had this discussion a couple years ago and we was watching their show. And we were like, you know, they must hate each other off camera. Like the minute that the cam, like the director says cut, <laughs> they probably go their separate ways and they probably don't even live in the same house. And lo and behold, they've been separated for like two years, even the whole duration while they were doing the show so I'm like that makes sense now and even Wendy spilled the tea a little bit on them saying how um when they were trying to get the two of them on her show um they'd have to do they was trying to get each other separate they were trying to get the Neelys well the Neelys wanted to come on separately and no one really 
thought about it then, but now it all makes sense. Anyway, I wasn't too surprised when I heard that. So I'm like, child. Whatever is glad ball. <laughs> um, who's the next one? Oh, I just see Paula and Robin Thicke getting, well, Paula filed for divorce, so I guess. They're next. I mean, who didn't see that coming? Honestly. Like, that whole public plea in that album that he did, that was just sad and embarrassing. Like, why would you do that? Honest, like, all he needed to do was just make a statement. Leave it as that. He didn't have to make a whole album named after her or make a bunch of sad, sorry songs to make himself look like an ass. Well, not really an ass, but make himself look desperate. And I'm like, you show your desperation behind the scenes. You don't have to do it as major as that. I mean, I understand the scandal was that big, but like, you, you could have, he did that wrong. In my opinion, he did that whole thing wrong, trying to win Paula back. Like, that didn't need to be that public. Like, they've been together, what, almost 20 years? They were high school sweethearts. So, I mean, he he went about that whole thing wrong. He should have been trying to win her back privately and not doing this big whole public plea. I think that was just embarrassing. I know I said that, like, three times already, but that was fucking embarrassing. Um... What else? Or who else? Um, Amber Rose and Wiz. Um, yeah, we, all, we already know they're getting divorced. But um, she been tweeting saying how she's still heartbroken and she's still... Shit like that. Like, she still loves him and all random shit like that. But um, I saw one website. I can't remember which one it was. Saying how they were supposed to meet up this weekend to try rekindle their marriage or some bullshit. If I remember what the website was, I'll probably take how true it is. Because, like, certain websites, certain gossip websites I go on, they, like, need to take a, you know, the story is far-fetched and completely over-exaggerated. So, probably, like, nine and a half out of ten stories on their website is over exaggerated and fake like it's probably some truth in one of their stories maybe but whatever so yeah if i remember i really cannot remember what website i saw that on but i mean wish the best of luck to all of them all of the couples um what's the next thing I had on this list, like I can't read my own fucking handwriting. <laughs> uh, la, 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 la. Oh, I don't have this on my notes, but y'all saw when Kim was in Paris and she, <laughs> people were saying she forgot North in the hotel. I'm like, that's so. I'm gonna come to Kim's defense. I honestly don't believe she would forget her child in the fucking hotel. So, anyway, when, um, and it was so funny, like, all the memes and stuff like that that they came up with. <laughs> um, a lot of people were saying that she was trying to get her outfit to be seen, and then she wanted to get a picture with North in her outfit. And I'm like, okay. That seems more logical than Kim forgetting about North. And I'm like, okay, that's retarded. But she came out with a statement saying, well, she tweeted saying how, um, she would never forget her daughter in the lobby of the hotel and saying that they had an issue with the car seat the day before so she wanted to go in and check. I'm like, okay, that's, that is possible. It's possible, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'm just leave that alone. The Kardashians intrigue me, but they got on my nerves at the same time. I think the only one I really like is Chloe. And probably Chloe and Kendall. I see everybody on Twitter like freaking themselves out over Kylie. I mean, Kylie, she's a pretty girl and she's grown into her own. Good for her. And she fucking tiger now. So she thinks she's woman. I mean, but she, she's still not my favorite. I still like Chloe because she's like one of the realest ones throughout the whole series. 
and Kendall, she doing her own thing. She backing away from them. So she can make her name her, for herself in the modern world, which is good for her. Like, she doing something outside of the reality show. Sorry for that pause just now. Anyway, okay, my next topic was... Um, last Saturday, which was October 3rd, it was the last... No, I lied. The... Anyway, the last Saturday in September was the last um, Saturday that they were bringing on Saturday morning cartoons on the CW. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I am so hurt by this because that I look forward to that on Saturday mornings. Like, I'll get up early to actually watch all the cartoons that they bring on. And at a certain time, I'll turn on my DVDs because ain't shit is be on TV on Saturdays. But um, that's when I'm home. Which is really most Saturdays. Whatever. I have, really have no life. But <laughs> but they ended it. And October 3rd, that was Saturday past. October 4th. They brought up... The fuck? I can't see my calendar from here. I mean, like the days. <laughs> um, they brought on some live action educational bullshit and I'm sitting here like what the fuck is this and I tweeted the CW and they ain't tweeting back yet still waiting but yeah I and then like later in the afternoon I saw that um the statement saying how uh CW was the last one to end their run with the vortex um whatever the vortex is like the block of cartoons or whoever they um bought the cartoons from or i don't know or rented i don't know how that works but i guess that was a parent cartoon company parent company but um i'm upset by this like so abc stopped their run in 2004 and nbc was in 2008 i believe and they also have live action um, educational programming, as they have in the um, statement. They that's what they are bringing on on Saturdays, and I'm sitting here like, ain't nobody could watch this shit because the whole point of Saturday morning is for Saturday morning cartoons. That's what you get up early for. You eat your cereal in front of the fucking TV and you go all out and watch until football comes on because it's college football season now. And, like, I'm going to miss Sonic. I'm going to miss Spider-Man, Dragon Ball Z. I never really watched, used to watch Yu-Gi-Oh! and um, Digimon. So, like, by that time, that was, they used to come on, like, at 11. So, like, by 11, I'm watching one of my DVDs or something like that. But I'm really hurt, so now I have to find something else to watch. More than likely, I'll be watching my DVDs earlier. That's what I did on Saturday. And I changed the channel because I didn't want them to get ratings. Because ain't nobody watching that shit. Like, we could watch Jack Hanna on fucking ABC. Ain't no, that's, and his show's so boring. Like, i rather when he comes on the late night shows and he bring, and the daytime shows and brings animals. That's more interesting to me. But his other shows are, like, boring. I don't want to know about that. Like, I, if I wanted to learn about animals, I could read a book. And lock them up. And um, the cartoons that they used to bring on used to deal with like bullies and used to deal with um, social problems. I know that was a big thing in Spider Man, like how to deal with bullies and dealing with your enemies and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, not really dealing with your enemies, but bullies and how to handle certain situations when you get argue with your friends and stuff like that. And I'm like, that's more vital than fucking. Anyway. I could run on forever. And also, y'all don't tell me go watch Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network because those cartoons are not the same from when I was younger. I don't even know half the cartoons on that. And it's just depressing. Like, don't. I think the only thing I'll probably watch on Nickelodeon is Spongebob. And I don't... After a while, I can't take too much of Spongebob. I, I could watch a marathon of Fairly Odd Parents, though. 
Um, yeah. I'm still upset by this. I'm so hurt. Um, also, what else did I have on my list? On my list? On my list? On my notes? Damn, this shit long. 25 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna hurry up and end this. Um, real quick. Did y'all watch Scandal? It's premiered two weeks ago. It, it's start. It's been good. It's the first episode was kind of slow to me, but it was necessary. They kind of make it seem like um, Harrison isn't dead now that Jake is looking into his murder. I mean, even though they buried him, I don't know if they looked at his body or whatever, but. I don't know. And also, Columbus Short was tweeting some bullshit saying how, are you sure that Harrison's dead? So I'm like, okay, I don't know if Shonda would give him another chance or whatever, but that's an interesting theory. So that's something to look forward to. And um, by the way, in the beginning of the first episode, when Carrie... Um, Olivia was getting finger <laughs> finger on the beach. Y'all know they shot that in the Bahamas, right? I'm just saying. Our waters really look like that. <laughs> I am proud that our waters really do look like that. And I love that beach, by the way. It's my favorite beach to go on. It's Cabbage Beach. Over Paradise Island by... It's not too far from Atlantis. But um, I think they're where they were. They were staying at the Ocean Club. Which is under the one and only brands I applied to work for them or child. Anyway, that's we're not gonna go into that. Um Yeah, and also how do we how to get away with murder has been very good too. I'm actually intrigued to see how the season is going to go. Because we already know that her husband dead. Um Annalise, I think that's something I'm child. Anyway, the loyal Viola Davis character. We think, well, we already know that her husband is dead and her students, I mean, her interns um, set his ass on fire to get rid of the evidence. And then also on last Thursday's episode, um, what about, oh yeah, uh, the neighbor who got arrested, I think, and they're making it seem like she was the one who, um, who killed him. And what's his face? Homeboy, uh, Wes? Mr. Gibbons. <laughs> Y'all know he was on Harry Potter, right? He played Dean, and I'm a big Harry Potter fan, so I was happy to see him on an American TV show. And his American accent is pretty good. <laughs> um, what are I saying? Yeah, and I guess Wes fell for her. Her name is Rebecca, I believe, the neighbor. So I guess he fell for her and trying to help her ass out. And I don't know how the other interns got twisted in it. So I guess we'll find out next week. And um, also, we kind of figure that the lawyer's husband, Viola's husband, she he had something to do with that girl who they find in the water tank. So it's kind of like either she killed him or her boyfriend. And, no, either he killed her. Or her boyfriend killed her and disposed of the body in the water tank. I, don't, we'll, I guess we'll, we have to keep watching to find out that story, how that's going to unfold. Um, what else went on? I don't know if y'all are watching Red Band Society, but y'all check that out. Um, this is my little TV talk. No. Uh, Gotham was pretty good, I think. It's, it's really good. Uh, it's not really solely focused on Batman. It's more focused on... Uh, Commissioner Jim. Well, he's not Commissioner. I think he's Detective in this. But, um, Jim Gordon. Um, Jada Pinkett, her character, she plays her character very well. Um, the guy who plays Penguin is really good. Um, the girl who plays Selena Kyle, Catwoman, she's very, she's very good in it, too. Um, and Alfred and Bruce, they crack me up, actually. Um, <laughs> Alfred don't put up with Bruce shit, that, and it is so funny. Um, so yeah, that's another good show. What comes on on Tuesdays? Oh, The Flash premiered this week. I'm, if y'all don't know, The Flash is my favorite superhero. And 
he they decided to do a show on the CW. I know last sometime last early in the year they um, made a crossover with Arrow. Arrow is a pretty good show too, by the way. Um, they made a crossover and they introduced his story in one of the ep two uh, two of the episodes on Arrow and. Um, in the first episode, they kind of explained how he got his power to become the Flash and run so fast and all that stuff like that. And um, I see it's going to be a lot of crossover with Arrow this in this season. So I'm going to give it a chance. So since that's my favorite superhero, I'm going to give it a chance. It wasn't bad. I'm not going to say a lot of people didn't like it, but I enjoyed it. I don't give a fuck. I enjoyed it. Uh, what else came on? Today's Wednesday, American Horror Story started tonight. Freak Show. I did not watch it yet. But by the time this video goes up, I will have seen it. <laughs> so I'm trying my best to avoid Twitter and Tumblr because Tumblr has all the GIS, GIS, GIS I don't know what they call it, of it of the episode so I'm trying my best to avoid it because <laughs> trust me whoever do those G GIF GIFs they're very quick like after you see it on TV it's already on Tumblr like probably like 10 or 15 minutes later and I'm like how the hell do they do that sometimes the show already has it pre-made and they'll do it on their Tumblr but then other people they post it like like that but I'm like shut up Anyway, so I'm excited to see how Freak Show is going to unfold. The Coven was really good. I enjoyed that season. Um, each season, they keep getting better and better. And a little tidbit, um, it looks like Jessica Lange, she's like the head bitch of American Horror Story. She, um, she may not be leaving after all. Um, Ryan Murphy, I saw on an interview with Ryan Murphy saying that... Um, She's not totally against doing another season. Before it was no, she's not doing another season now. She's open to it. That's how he's making a team and I guess they're putting together the right part for next season. And one thing I like about American Horror Story, I love how every season it's something different. It's not the same monotonous storyline that a lot of shows have. Like the first season was Horror House, the second season was... Asylum, the third season was Coven, this season is Freak Show. So it's like the same group of people playing different characters each season and that keeps the show interesting. So I'm um I haven't watched like I said, I haven't watched this the series season premiere of Freak Show yet. I'm hella excited for it. I see a demented clown is on it and clowns freak me out. So we'll see how that goes. Like, oh fuck no. But we'll see how that goes. Um, and I'm excited to what's going to... I'm excited to find out what's going to be next season. And one thing I noticed during um, Halloween Horror Nights, like at Universal Studios, they haven't used American Horror Story yet. Like, y'all have enough ammo. Like, one of the horror houses could be one of the seasons. Or you have a horror house for each season. Like, I don't understand how they have not done that yet. Anyway, when I went, it was awesome because it was the first year they did The Walking Dead. That was like two, three years ago, and I had a ball. It was amazing. Um, hopefully, but I see they keep reusing the same, the same Walking Dead, Pre Alien vs. Predator. They keep reusing that, and I'm like, okay, y'all are doing the same things. Let's try switch it up and do something different. Y'all can keep The Walking Dead because the zombies that they had walking around were scary as shit, and they look real. That, they were awesome. Um, but I think y'all could have more. There's a lot of horror movies out, like Nightmare. I know one year they did Freddy vs. Jason. That was like years ago. But um, I, there are a lot of horror movies out that they can make into a horror house and have like pe characters from the movie walking around. But I think American Horror Story would be a great addition to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights. Um, okay, let me get into some of those series right quick. Um, so y'all know the whole Ebola thing is go the, going on 
Um, I think they have a case in Texas, and the guy died this morning. Today is Wednesday, so when I post it will be Thursday, but whatever. Um, so yeah, the guy died Wednesday morning. Um, and I think his wife or girlfriend or whoever the hell he was staying with didn't know she's sick, so she's under quarantine. Her and her kids are under quarantine, and um, I know we had a scare here a couple days ago in Miami. Um, a teenager, he um, he fell out on the beach and he got really sick. A teenager from West Africa, he was here on vacation and well they didn't say if it was a he or she, they just said a teenager from West Africa, West Africa um, was here and they got sick on the beach and um, they had to be rushed to a hospital and then they went to another hospital so they had to quarantine both hospitals and then like a block, I think a they quarantined the block as well because like on the news they had um what the big red trucks is the ambulances <laughs> that was a brain fart the ambulance and the um police cars and stuff like that um they had it blocked off so no one could get through in or out and they had to be approved and stuff like that and they had to be wearing a hazmat stuff and i'm like y'all really Y'all really trying to um, erase the human race. That's pretty much how it seems. Like, con well, control the human race, like by removing a lot of people. That's just my opinion. I'm saying, and I can agree with um, much love from KY. Um, Y'all go check out her page because she went off on this holy bullet thing. It's like y'all listen to her, like. Y'all watch her video. It's about the first one was about forty five minutes, and then the other one she's been doing has been like five minutes at most. But y'all check out those videos. It's really she makes a lot of sense in it. And um, what else? Uh, I think there's there is a case on DC. I haven't heard anything more about that. But yeah, I'm gonna keep. Y'all keep y'all eyes and ears open for scares and whatever in y'all towns and y'all cities. So, yeah, everybody just be careful and enjoy your weekend. Have a great week, whatever, whenever y'all see this. Just enjoy your day. Enjoy life. I don't know how to end this, so. I said that in my last video, too, I guess. But yeah, I know.